Good morning Terraria players and welcome back to the second part of the showcase for the most recent beta for the Anarchist mod. In this video, we take a look at the structures, bosses, and even some of the new Master Mode exclusive items. Ready to go? Let's get back into it. To start with the structures, there are a total of three new ones for this mod. For now, Lost Outposts, Prismite Caves, and Moon Temples. Lost Outposts are smaller structures scattered underground in any biome. They've been redone since the last beta I showcased and are now more important and contain better loot. To access them, their bricks are immune to any pickaxe, but can be blown open with explosives. It takes quite a few bombs to bust one open. The loot inside is pretty great for starting out. It contains a terrorist weapon, some starter gear, and a bunch of starter potions. There's also some wooden crates placed inside. As for feedback on these, I like them. Maybe the walls can be made of the same bricks as the outside bricks so they don't clog my inventory, but they're a very nice addition that helps the early game progression out. I like them. As for Prismite Caves, they're similar to Marble and Granite Caves, spawning randomly underground but never appearing when you're actually looking for them. They're made out of a new type of stone and have large Prismite gems sticking out all over the place. This is the main source for Prismite in this mod. Each block has a chance to drop one mine, but each big crystal makes four smaller crystals. And next are the Moon Temples. There's a decent amount of them in a world, usually hovering around Sky Islands. There's always one bigger Moon Temple directly above spawn, with a temple altar on it that's used to summon a boss. Each temple has a chest that contains starter gear and a table and chair for shoving all your useless NPCs to. The loot inside the chest is good and the weapons are all nice and the temples just look good. Worth it to explore early game. With the structures out of the way, let's talk about the new bosses and the redone AI of some bosses in Master Mode. Essentially, Anarchy Mode from the last version of Anarchist is gone. Instead, Master Mode is by default the new Anarchy Mode. You can change in the configuration options. There's even Master Mode exclusives, which I'll go over after talking about each boss and their Master Mode changes. Currently, it is only up to the Wall of Flesh, so through Skeletron, not Wall of Flesh itself. To start with, King Slime. These boss showcases are more to show off the moveset and not actually fight them or else this video would be 30 minutes long. In the new Anarchy Mode, King Slime is bigger, duh, summons only Spike Slimes, and occasionally fires crossing Slime Beams. It is still King Slime though. The Slime Beams do inflict a Slime debuff, which can really mess up your day sometimes. It's also a lot more aggressive too. For the Eye of Cthulhu, the AI from the old Anarchist version returns, with his twin inspiration, lasers in the first phase, and an absurd ranged flamethrower for the second phase. If you beat the old Anarchist Eye, this one will feel very familiar. Then again, why fix something that isn't broken? The EA from the last version was fine, and it's good to see it return. In progression order, the new boss Endogorth is next, the newest boss to be added and sort of a redone Frost Cell. All new moveset, new sprite, and new loop. Is it better than Frost Cell? Yeah. Its movesets are more varied, more interesting, and there's no invisible projectiles anymore. It's a better fight with much better visuals too, and better loot. To summon it, you do need to find a regular ice formation growing in the ice biome. Not too difficult to find. It's a good boss and fits right into progression. Although I haven't actually tested it when actually fighting without god mode on because this is for display purposes only. I'll get to actually fighting it when I actually play the Anarchist mod. The Brain of Cthulhu seems to have the most major changes of the Master Mode AI, making it a completely different fight, now with more spinning aggressively. I don't think it's as hard as the previous version though, because the spinning can be a little bit telefraggy, but it's not, you know, the uh, major distorting debuff that the last version had. For Eater of Worlds, I didn't really notice anything aside from cursed fireballs. No idea if much else changed, I couldn't really tell from, you know, standing around and just kind of watching it attack. I don't know. The next boss in progression is the second new boss, Luna. She's summoned by using moon sugar on an altar above spawn. She enrages if you leave the sky or if it's day. Her attacks are pretty much the same as the last beta I previewed a few months ago. Not much has changed, but she got moved up to pre-Skeletron instead of pre-Evil bosses. Not much change, which is good. She was already a good waifu boss in the last beta and just as good in this one. Skeletron also got some pretty big changes for Master Mode. Projectile Skulls now show up in Phase 1, and he summons dungeon enemies like the last Anarchist versions. Both Skeletrons from the alternate difficulties have been very difficult, and that's A-OK. -okay. When this mod is done, I can tell that Skeletron will be a fun fight when I, of course, do a playthrough in two years whenever it's finished. So far, those are the only bosses to receive their Master Mode changes. Now, let's look at their Master Mode exclusives, the Masteries. They have a similar drop chance as their pets do, but these ones actually do something. You can only equip one at a time. 
The mastery of slime, the one from King Slime, makes all slimes friendly and grants a damage reduction bonus the closer you are to a slime. The mastery of vision, the Eye of Cthulhu's, creates a small cone in front of you that points towards your cursor. It deals damage to anything within that cone, extending pretty far. Does not do any damage to Luna or the Destroyer though. Endogord says it spawn a blizzard that freezes enemies for every 10 seconds, and it does freeze them, but it feels more like 20 or so seconds. Mastery of Blood from the Brain of Cthulhu saps the life from foes within a short range and stores them in hearts that orbit around you. One appears every 10 seconds or so. The tooltip says that you can press a hotkey to absorb whatever hearts you have to gain health, but I found that I couldn't absorb them until they were max. It's a very strong mastery though. The next one, the Mastery of Corruption, drops on the Eater of Worlds. It increases your critical damage and your regular damage by a whopping 25%, but decreases your defense by 50%. Incredibly strong, despite the defense reduction. This is probably the strongest mastery in this current beta. Next is the Mastery of the Stars, which is from Luna Waifu. It makes a shield as you take damage, up to a certain max. Pressing a hotkey allows you to discharge it and do a very underwhelming amount of damage. Not really worth running at the moment, especially after taking multiple hits. Doesn't really do enough damage. The final one in this beta is the Mastery of the Undead from Skeletron. This one is really strong. When you die, you become undead for 20 seconds, not being able to take damage or heal. When the 20 seconds runs out, you die for real. This triggers on any death. Fall damage, enemies, boulders, any single death. It's pretty strong and it feels like the old Dark Artist revives, but you do end up dying again at the end. So that's the beta, most of the content, and all the bosses and some more stuff. It's shaping up very well already and will only continue to get better as it goes. In the works is the rest of the classes for pre hard mode currently, mainly first. I might showcase what is done depending on time restraints, but that's all for me from now. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Blade Burger out.